Welcome, this is so wonderful. I must tell you that in the four congregations, this is the chattiest group of all. <clears throat> like, don't you see each other during the week or something? There's just... <laughs> The energy is wonderful. And <clears throat> knowing that there's a witch here it is uh, <laughs> in itself a special feeling, right? <laughs> and so if we need a spell cast, this is pretty wonderful, right? So um, I would have looked for a broom if I'd have known, right? <laughs> Yes, welcome, and welcome to Zoomers, and um, let's gather together, and let's, are there any announcements? I, I saw on the sign that there's a craft and a bake sale on November the 26th, already a bunch of tables reserved, and I think that <clears throat> Uh, Odessa is also doing one, I think, on that day. So tell tell people to go on down the road and we'll tell people to come on down here and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure of the hours over there, but yeah. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll come up here and buy a bunch of stuff and bring it down there and up the price, right? <laughs> I'd say, yes. <laughs> well, apparently, there is an announcement arriving. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to see Leah and Brandon back. Yes. <laughs> Especially Brandon. Sorry, Leah. Oh, oh. <laughs> He's my special man. Ah. I, I don't worry about the door. I am out there lifting stuff out of the way. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had him out there in the closet lifting stuff down for me already. So I, I've missed him. He's my little. Helper. Yeah. <laughs> little? Yeah. Well, no, he's not so little anymore. <laughs> a couple of things. Uh, we just want to remind everybody about the food bank. Uh, if you've noticed, uh, it's dropped off quite a bit since the COVID. And uh, so maybe we need a bit of a reminder and that maybe we could go back to bringing something every Sunday like we used to do. And uh, that maybe if people can remember that more than just whenever it hits them that every Sunday you're going to come out with an article of food so think about that and um, the other thing is that Elaine's setting up a list of scripture readers and so she's going to need to know who would be willing to read so if you're willing let her know or let me know and uh, we'll do up a list so that you'll know ahead of time when you're when you're going to read and if you'll read um, is there anything else? There was a lovely session meeting. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we had a session meeting uh, on Monday. Yeah, and it was good. Part of us, part of us were on Zoom, and part of us were here, um, and it was joint between the two churches. Um, so it worked really well, and we came to some conclusions, and uh, so I think we're set pretty well. Through to Easter anyway, and uh, mm -hmm. I think we are. Then we'll go from there. So, yeah, so it's working pretty good right now. Mm -hmm. And I think we have a meeting in two weeks. Yes. With the <clears> search <throat> committee and all the churches again. Of the four congregations are going to get together again just to say, how are we doing? Are we really doing well? And how well we are doing? All that yeah, nice and probably set up some way of taking a look at the finances yes. and how that would work and there's a few things to iron out that way but yeah um, i think that'll be accomplished uh, that meeting stuff i think that's all for me well good health <laughs> in terms of of um the readings so peggy was away this week <clears throat> She's gone to the quilt, apparently. Oh. So yeah, maybe there'll be a beautiful quilt for sale at one of these two craft sales. Um, and so I guess it was left to me to advise the uh, scripture reader. Uh, I didn't do that. So I am doing that today. 
Um, so shake off the anxiety of not knowing what you were supposed to do or when, um, and we'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, I did spend an hour or so at um, Emmanuel yesterday, putting our service on the computer because it wasn't working. <clears throat> so my good friend Vicky came and saved my life and all that kind of stuff. Then, um, so if it doesn't work when I get there, then we will just pray and pray and pray. <laughs> so let's pray. <laughs> let's gather together and there's a responsive. Um, so you do the underlined. Um, so, welcome to this place of worship. Oh, no. Welcome in the name of Christ. That's my part. <laughs> welcome to this place of worship, situated on the traditional lands of the Yeah. <laughs> we are going to get this, by the way, right? Adenosani. I was practicing at home, but I still don't have it either, but we will continue to work on it. For five weeks, we have journeyed together contemplating God's promise of abundance for all. Remembering with gratitude our many blessings and remembering ourselves to share all that we have and all that we are with the world that God so loves. This morning, we gathered to celebrate, give thanks, and praise. Let us prepare to worship God. And after an, um, an initiative at Riverside, as um, Judy Skinner has um, encouraged us to move farther than just doing a land acknowledgement, to move into understanding what our relationships with uh, First Nations folks are as a denomination and as congregations, so she has prepared uh, a little presentation for each week. And this week, um, this is the one for this week. And I think there's a slide, yeah. When she was four or five, Linda Papase McDonald was taken by plane from her parents' home on Sydney Lake, Ontario. I looked outside. My mom was, you know, flailing her arms and, and I and she must have been crying and I see my dad grabbing her and I was wondering why. Why my mom was, you know, she was struggling. She told me many years later what happened and she explained to me why we had to be sent away to residential school. And I just couldn't get the memory out of my head. And I still remember to this day what happened that day. And she told me like she was so hurt. And I used to ask her, why did you let us go? Like, why didn't you stop them? You know, why didn't you, you know, come and get us? And she told me we couldn't because they told us if we tried to do anything like get you guys back, be thrown into jail. So they didn't want to end up in jail because they still had babies at the camp. And our next slide. Between 1925 and 1969, the United Church of Canada operated a total of 15 schools within the Indian residential school system as part of the federal government's policy of assimilating Indigenous peoples. Students in those schools suffered physical, sexual, emotional, spiritual, and cultural abuse, for which they sued the government and churches. This resulted in the Indian Residential School Settlement Agreement, which included the creation of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. Its final report and calls to action make clear that there is still a very long journey ahead of us as we seek reconciliation. 
and the call to action. Number 61. We call upon church parties to the settlement agreement in collaboration with survivors and representatives of Aboriginal organizations to establish permanent funding to Aboriginal people for regional dialogues for Indigenous spiritual leaders and youth to discuss Indigenous spirituality, self-determination, and reconciliation. And the purpose of, of sharing these things is not to um, instill guilt or uh, worry, but to give us a broader understanding of some of the <clears throat> global implications of what these schools and our role in them uh, did to our First Nations folk. Um, I think by naming it and understanding it and bringing it to our consciousness, I'm hoping that it frees us to action, um, to understand um, marginalization and to move us forward into uh, collaboration not just with First Nations folks, but with all folks that feel excluded. And so that's why we share these things. Wow. We light this candle once more this morning to shine a light of hope for all to see. We trust that the light of Christ is present with us in this place and shines brightly in our lives and in our community of faith. And together, let us do our statement of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating. Who has come in Jesus. Word made flesh. Reconcile and make new. Who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. And as we enter further into our worship, please join me in the call to worship. Come and celebrate God's presence. Oh, no, oops. that's not what I have. <laughs> well, let's do whatever's there. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Try that. Okay, come. That's what I said. Come and celebrate God's presence. We come to celebrate our community together. Come and celebrate this community of saints. We celebrate with all communities of saints down through the ages. From generation to generation. You have blessed your church, O God. We give you thanks and praise your holy name. Come and celebrate God. And together, let's do our opening prayer. Holy and gracious God, we gather as seekers, disciples, and friends. We gather to give you thanks for the blessings of our lives and to replenish and refuel for the road ahead. We gather to learn the wisdom of your way and feel the warmth of your love. Bless this gathering as we join together in whole 
heart of worship. Amen. And our opening hymn is Bless the Lord. If you know it, please sing along. I was going to encourage you to clap along, but I knew that would be beyond us, right? <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah. We often come feeling a little distance from our God. And so Phil has included a lovely blessed uh, words of insurance. So please hear these words. Do not lose heart. Those who humbly admit their sins find favor with God. For God answers prayer and forgives transgression. Believe this good news. We are forgiven and free to the newness of life. prayer of elimination. May these words of scripture give us new sight, new vision. May we see newly the abundance of our lives and the opportunities we have to share with our neighbors. Amen. And we'll do the psalm as a responsive song with a spoken chorus, I believe is what's happening. <laughs> Please pray together. Give your praise to God, O oh my soul. Yep. God, let's do it together. <laughs> praise God, O oh my soul. As long as I live, I will praise God. Yes, as long as I have life, I will sing praises to God. But not your trust in princes, nor in any mortal, for in them there is no help. When they breathe their last, they return to dust. Then their plans come to nothing. Happy are those whose help is God of Jacob whose hope maker of heaven and earth, 
the sea and all that is in them. God cares for the stranger in the land and sustains the widow and orphan, but the way of the wicked God turns to ruin. God shall reign forever, O Zion, near God for all generations. Give me your praise to God, O my soul. God sets prisoners free, restores sight to the blind. God straightens those who are bent, loves those who are just. God cares for the stranger in the land and sustains the widow and orphan. But the way of the wicked, God turns to ruin. God shall reign forever, O Zion. Your God for all generations. Give your praise to God, O my soul. Hello, my name is Doug, and I am reading this morning. <laughs> <laughs> First reading is from Colossians, uh, chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. Because you are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with heartfelt compassion, with kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive in the same way God has forgiven you. Above all else, put on love, which binds the rest together and makes them perfect. Let Christ's peace reign in your hearts, since as members of one body, you've been called to that peace. Dedicate yourselves to thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, rich as it is, dwell in you. Instruct and admonish one another wisely. Sing gratefully to God from your hearts in songs, hymns, and songs of the Spirit. And whatever you do, whether in speech or in action, do it in the name of Jesus, our Savior, giving thanks to God through Christ. And our gospel reading is from Matthew, 22nd chapter, verses 34 to 40. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had left the Sadducees speechless, they gathered together. And one of them, an expert on the law, attempted to trick Jesus with this question. Teacher, which commandment of the law is the greatest? Jesus answered, you must love the most high God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. That is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, the whole law is based and the prophets as well. Thus ends the reading. And before we enter the, uh, the message time, uh, let's hear Morning Has Broken.
thank you. That was wonderful. <laughs> So this is All Saints Sunday. You know, we're going to be, we're moving into uh, All Hallows Eve, and then we will move into All Saints Day. But this is All Saints Sunday. So first of all, I will ask you, with a show of hands, who are saints in this place? There you go. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Bonus points. <laughs> that was a great answer. And so I was going to move into, well, maybe we should define what saints are. And, and one of the definitions I saw was Saints are those people who are trying to live into God's love. I think we have made that decision and we have made that decision to come into a place where we can worship fully and openly as the saints that we are. Often, when we define some words we make them seem as if they're so far beyond what we could ever be that it doesn't seem to be real to us, to our personhood. And yet, <clears throat> the definitions, I guess, are um, colored, I suppose. I mean, we think of sort of the Catholic tradition of saints and all that goes into that, trying to prove that they did miracles and all those kinds of steps. It makes it seem as if it's way beyond anything that we could do. And yet, the saints were humans. They were chosen. Um, they, they might have stood out uh, in a particular way, but so do we. In our everyday lives, the power that we have to support, to bless, to include, to love is important to every person that we connect with. It doesn't matter if we do some kind of magical um, transformation for a huge number of people. I mean, often, when we put people on pedestals, we learn about the flaws, and we come back to challenge sort of our beliefs in, in the heroes we might have had. And every one of us falls short in some way. But every one of us also empowers and enlips and loves so openly and freely that we are indeed saints in this place. We sometimes forget the power that we have as individuals when we meet people, whether it's so grandchildren, perhaps, which is a whole new way of parenting, right? It's parenting the right way, I, I think. Yeah, you know, you go, well, I'm not making the mistakes I made with my kids, but <laughs> it's as if we learn maybe a little late, but that we learn the power that we have in relationship. Over the last few weeks, we've been concentrating a bit more on the Psalms. And in today's Psalms, today's Psalm, it talks about how God reaches out to the marginalized. It talks about 
the widows and orphans and the, those who are excluded and how God cares for them. What we need, I think, as God's agents in, on earth, to insert ourselves into that song and to say, who are we as saints? Well, we are people who reach out to the marginalized. We are people who reach out to the orphans, to the, um, it says here, that restore sight to the blind. It says setting prisoners free. And the piece that resonated most for me this past week was my favorite reading, my favorite Bible verse, which happened to be in the readings this week, which was, okay, Jesus, tell us, what are the two, or what are the most important commandments? And he says, well, there's two. You put God ahead of all else, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. How can we go wrong if we don't, if we do that, right? How can we go wrong? Well, sometimes we go wrong because we want to redefine who our neighbor is. If our neighbor is somebody like us, yeah, that's pretty easy for us to love and to accept and to empower. The other word that kept coming out to me was prisoner. Set the prisoner free. And in my experience, especially when I work with people who are marginalized, they are prisoners in a world where we feel free to be who we are. I think of the youth group where people, where they're trying to define who they are in the world. These are kids who are part of the LGBTQ community, but they're also part of our lives, right? They're part of the fabric. And if we are denying their inclusion, whether it's through just ignoring, then we're not setting those folks free. Is it an easy journey? Not for them, and it's not easy for us either, really. Because sometimes we feel when we're trying to reach out to the marginalized, I don't know what to do. I'm afraid of those who are different than me. Or it might simply be, I don't know how to love them. I don't know, because I don't want to cause more harm. I don't know the language. I don't know the understandings of how they are in the world. The last time I was here, I had a couple of chairs up here. First of all, it was a chair where people just sat by themselves feeling isolated and um, not included. And then we pulled another chair beside it and tried to put a, make a bench out of it. So that just allowing someone else to sit there, that person was included. There was no need for dialogue, particularly at that point. It was just about being with. Sometimes when we're trying to free ourselves from our own imposed prisons, whatever that might be, whether it's a body that's not moving quite as well as it used to and we feel that we can't do as much as we used to be able to do, we have to adapt. 
one of the hardest things that I've experienced from folks seems to be the inability to name our own gifts. What makes us special? What makes us saints? I was at a, a training. We're doing a training for um, queer youth to um, be able to go into the world and express who they are a little more fully and completely and give them some leadership skills. And one of the um, pieces that we were doing that week was we were going to do who are we as individuals in the world? How do we see ourselves? Then how do we see ourselves in community? And then how do we see ourselves in the grand picture where society has structures and all that kind of stuff? And we were trying to do it from a place of positivity. Because most of us can find um, real fluid ways of expressing the places where we feel inadequate. You know, oh, I got a bad temper or oh, um, I don't like this or oh, uh, road rage. How could the world be so piled against me on this particular road, on this particular time? I'm the only one here who's competent, right? We can feel the places where um, we might not be fully engaged in a loving way. So we paired up. And I paired with a, a I, I think they are in their early 20s, a uh, young trans man who's um, a loyalist uh, college student uh, taking social work. And we are trying to think of positives about um, who we are in the world. Well, <clears throat> I don't think I phrased it very well, but I said, I'll tell you who we are. And so <laughs> I meant, <laughs> I've met you a couple of times and here's what I see. Can we do that? Would you let me do that as I explained it? And he said, sure. And I said, you don't have to accept what I tell you, but it might spark whatever. So I said, you look like a loving human being to me. You have curiosity. You want to be, you are empathetic. And <clears throat> as we went through these things, because mostly I've done this a lot in groups, right? So it comes fairly simple to me. Um, and often what I say is what I hope that people see in me, right? So, and so it, it's there. <clears throat> He's one of these people who blushes really easily, right? So he was so red. And then he almost started to cry because he said, you've only met me twice and I think you, you know who I am. And I said, well, I think you know who you are. And I think that you need to bring that into the world um, with a little more confidence. And that's why you're here, right? We're learning how to be as authentic as we can be. We need to release ourselves from whatever holds us back so that we can then share that with the world. There's something about the chatter that I hear when I come in here each Sunday, because I think that's a freeing of ourselves to just connect and say, how was your week or what's going on? Or I love you is what you're saying, whether you feel that or not. That's what I'm hearing, is that you are important to me and I'm important to you. And that's what inclusion is. That's what setting the prisoners free is all about. It's about just accepting people where they are at, right at that moment.
this sort of series of focusing on the Psalms was really about seeking ways of sharing the wisdom that we have gathered. The Psalms are about wisdom, but they're also about being authentic. The words of the Psalms can be both loving and accepting. They can also be angry. Have you forsaken me? Where the heck am I in your vision, God? And that's okay. Because if we ask the questions and then give ourselves some time to hear the answers, we'll know that we're not alone. That we belong. And that those things that make us prisoners of our own selves will be released so that we can love God above all and then love our neighbors. I think I'll just leave it there. Blessings. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going home now. <laughs> Except I've shuffled all my pages. <laughs>
didn't really do them in information. But I would say that um, the minute for mission is about outreach and trying to, in some ways, engage in communities that are feeling less than. And so continue to support the works of mission in the United Church. Whatever we give has such a broad reach. I wasn't quite sure where I was going to share this and it probably doesn't really fit here. But one of the things we do at the youth group is we do a check-in it's called. And so everybody gets to speak. Everybody is asked to give their first name, their age, and their pronouns. And then to share a good thing, and maybe a struggle, and maybe how they are right now. And as I've shared before, <clears throat> I don't ask them to do anything I wouldn't do. And so when I say I'm 71, <clears throat> all the uh, comments about fossils and old and... <laughs> <laughs> Which, which is blessing because they're communicating with me. <laughs> um, but there was one young person who has come twice now. Um, the first week barely spoke at all. And so we, we have a space where most people sit and around some tables and then some sort of sit on the floor. So that they're sort of part of the group. This person stood sort of back at the door. And the first week, as I said, they, they barely spoke. Um, the second week, they said again for the, um, they had shared this at least the first week. I don't have a name. Our name is so important to us, right? I mean, that is really how we define ourselves. Who are you is one of the first questions we ask each other. And this person couldn't come up with a name that they felt described them or held them in some, um, in some capacity. And I never leave anybody alone the whole time, right? And so I went over and one-on-one, -on -one, they're not too bad about sharing. And I said, how are you feeling about saying you have no name? And they said, well, it is a struggle for me. Um, they appear male but they use she, her pronouns. And so there's a, obviously an internal struggle going on there about who they are. And so jokingly, I just said, well, next week in check-in, I'm gonna ask everybody to give you a name, to give you some choices. And at first I thought it was gonna be really, she was gonna be really scared. And she said, that would be wonderful. Again, I guess it has to do with journeying with, providing choice for, and also giving voice to the voices. We're not sure how this is gonna work out, right? Because <laughs> some of the choices that they have made <laughs> for their own names are <clears throat> They, I struggled with, <laughs> but it was just the openness and the excitement that this person manifested about a simple thing 
that was the throwaway line for me was, well, we'll just get people the name. <laughs> and what has this got to do for a minute for mission? The minute for mission is about reaching out in positive ways to empower and bless people who are on a journey that's probably unlike some of our journeys. So I look forward to this next week. Maybe they won't be there. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, I just needed to share that. I don't, I didn't know where to put it. <laughs> and I, I'll bring back a list of names that came up and let you know if it worked. <laughs> Invitation to offering. We have such abundance in our lives. Even if it feels like we're struggling sometimes. When inflation is going crazy and it's costing us how much, I mean, the, the place I notice it the most, obviously, is filling up my gas tank, right? It just, I go, how can this possibly be fair? <laughs> And yet then when I pay for it, I go, but I have it. I have it. Others don't. Others are really struggling to even put food on their table. So it was a wonderful reminder of the uh, necessity of food banks and sharing in not just our dollars and cents, but in our energy and our love, right? Love your neighbor. Find ways every day to do that. And I think that's all we'll do in terms of offering. You know where the plate is. Um, we're going to make a bigger plate each week. And I encourage you to fill it to the brim. <laughs> I'm sure some of you have old Monopoly games at home, right? You just It'll just look like there's lots, right? And Canadian tire money that's probably sitting in a drawer somewhere. I think a visible sign of our abundance reminds us just how blessed we are and how easy it is to reach out. And it's not the amount, it's the intention. Amen. Prayers of the people. Oh, what have we got here? Yep. Oh. Yeah, that we're still doing. Yeah, we'll just skip over. That was just all about collection and stuff. Praise God, probably in all blessings. <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> oh, well, that's a bit ahead, but we'll do prayers of the people. I don't know if you can go back or whatever. I don't. I don't think there is one. I think there is just yeah. I'll just do one. I mean, that's that's what I'm here for, right? <laughs> Are there any prayer requests that we can do? Yes. She was offering yeah. kind of a tough time with the stem, stem cell oh. research. Wow. So uh, keep, her, keep, keep, keep her in your thoughts. Yeah. And for people who are living in new surroundings, blessings. <laughs> comfort as we head into uh, be safe on Halloween and all that kind of stuff. Enjoy that celebration. It's one of the high holidays of life. <laughs> um, and so I think the food bank might get some extra calories from candy that might arrive next week. <laughs> um, I was going to buy some, you know, like day old, but most of the Halloween candy is beside the candy canes this year. It's, it's just like they're switching so quick that anyway, let's join in prayers of people. Loving God, we are your people in this place. You know our needs, our places of brokenness, you also know our places of joy and success 
and love. Let your spirit work through us, in us, and around us. Let us feel that power, that connection, the healing of your presence. Jesus, you made it so simple. Love God and love your neighbor. Bring us to reminders in the everyday of our lives that we bring that to every person we meet. We share it openly and fully. Help us to know the saints that we are. With all our flaws and imperfections, Make known to us the gifts and the strengths and the power that we bring. Make us aware of the influence that we have. Help us to use it wisely through the wisdom granted from our faith. For your people, your world, trying to do our best. As we prepare to leave this place, help us to feel emboldened to live your truths. In Jesus' name, amen. So I think we're at, we are sent out in faith to serve. Is there, is there something before that? Well, I'll just do the commission. How is that? Oh, and, oh, there, oh, there. <laughs> and you thought you were better, right? Now I'm just throwing you back into long COVID, right? <laughs> ah, that's the, what did they do? I wonder when there was no PowerPoint. Right? How did they express their confusion about it? Was always just about whatever this guy up here wanted to do, right? And we just followed along. Anyway, the commissioning in recognition of the journey of these past five weeks and in support of the mission and ministry of our community of faith and the wider church. Oh, that's let us take up the offering now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. With glad and joyful hearts. <laughs> We may never know when we're done. <laughs> we are marching. That's been up there a few times, so let's do that. And if you feel so called, there is quite a long introduction on this one. But if you're familiar with this song, please join in. But it is a fair introduction. <laughs> and that'll give me time to escape. with you for a little while. Yeah. 